Hello, I'm, I'm Michael Pope. I'm the brother of Suzanne Pope. We're in Suzanne Pope's home, uh, and we're going to take a look at some of the things in her home, the treasures, her artifacts, her uh, possessions, um, some of the things that just made Suzanne who she is and kind of reflect on who she is and what, what was important to her. And, a lot of these things bring back uh, memories to to the fam to, to me and the, my family of uh, what 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 is Suzanne what what she came to mean to us. Yeah, throughout the house, there's a a lot of a lot of the pieces came from my my grandparents um, that you know that. Uh, just are things that are common to our family that we we've enjoyed and we've seen throughout our lives. Uh, some of the th some of the artwork from my grandfather Beb from uh, the Oklahoma, where he's done, done some fine watercolors and etchings, and so we we enjoyed looking at his watercolors and uh, it, you know there were things that we we the family kind of treasure uh, and. So there's things that are some of the heirlooms that it came through, uh, the china, the silver that came from from the family, and uh, things that, that she liked to collect. Uh, one of the things that she, you know, added to the collection as far as uh, pieces were, you know, she was collecting spode, a uh, Christmas pattern that. You know, she spent many years collecting, and we gave her spode for Christmas many years to help build her, build her collection. So those, those are kind of things that just we, we bring in the old, the things that came from the past, and things that are bringing into the new. So, uh, but she did, you know, she liked the the old things. We're in this 19 early 20th century house with its um, <laughs> almost almost. A, uh, original equipment, almost probably a, the original wiring, as far as I can tell. So it's uh, she liked the old things, she liked the old styles, and she appreciated the the craftsmanship in in the old the old heirlooms. So you know she yeah she's arranged things and everything has its place. Um, as we go through the rooms, we kind of see um, you know the 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 way she's got things organized her, her books are in where they should be as far as category and author and subject um, and in each room there's displays or maybe she's got her little cat figures over here uh, her Doctor Who stuff over here uh, her music and the videos and everything is, is well organized she's and Throughout her house, um, the furnishings, the the plates, the you know the silverware, um, all the all the things of daily life are well well organized. Um, so she was everything in its place and a place for everything. Uh, so she had a lot of interests, and we kind of talked about the. She likes to sew, and she sewed many of her own clothes um, throughout, e even from maybe high school or so. She was making complex uh, dresses and things like that, um, and she was accomplished. At, you know, they were high high quality um, clothing, uh, and she learned to knit. And she was a prolific knitter. Uh, she would think nothing of dashing off a, a sweater for something um, and you know so when my first child was born she knitted a nice little baby sweater boom it's a it's a treasure we will have so uh, but it was nothing to her to to whip that out and uh, but you know the cooking she was very interested in cooking and different recipes and um, kind of diving into um, maybe Indian cuisine, and she was definitely interested in um, Chinese cuisine, and so she uh, she enjoyed her, her her food, and I guess the exotic flavors, really, I guess I would say. Uh, the gardening, she, she was a, a prolific gardener. She enjoyed her garden, uh, 
and she had spent a lot of time out there. Uh, she was very, very pleased with it. And uh, in this house, how she kind of designed or the, for, for this property, you know, she designed the front and the back and kind of how, how she wanted it to look. And, you know, it was all kind of crafted the way she envisioned a, a, a garden should be. Uh, with the vegetables and the and the settings in the back and then the roses in the front and the, and the you know that was all very you know, pleasing to her to have these you know have that have the roses yeah her career path took a uh, securitist route you, Suzanne graduated from Berkeley uh, with a BA in, in linguistics uh, she, and she promptly got a job working in fashion or in the uh, garment industry. She was down in uh, Los Angeles. Um, she went to the Art Institute. And, but, you know, that kind of morphed into working in retail. She worked for Mar Mervyn's for a little while um, and more on the business side. And, the, and that, you know, they, over time, she became more and more involved in the, in the uh, computer aspects of the, of the job. And, uh, that kind of led her into working into the security, the information security aspects of the job. And eventually that's where she kind of found her, her niche in, in her career path and started off at Schwab 20 years ago and working in information technology and, and kind of uh, blossomed in that environment. So um, you know, it didn't start off exactly where she was going, but she, you know, took, took the route and ended up where, uh, where she was, uh, good and did it, did a fine job. And, um, yeah, Suzanne, um, did maintain that, uh, her, her interest in making her own clothes and, um, doing, doing fine work, uh, uh, designing or not designing, but, you know, finding the patterns and making her own clothes uh, you know she thought nothing of making a dress and or or, or a blouse or 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 something um you know, she was she was avid about her um uh, sewing she she had built up a um a form a i don't know what a model for her for clothes that, so she could fit things for herself um and you know she did uh, exquisite job of uh, of doing some uh, doing some just I, I would say very complicated very art, uh, detailed intricate work in in building up or making her making her clothes uh, you know she was her friend Nancy and Susan and Paula and Rowan from they, they were friends from high school and she you know she they're wonderful friends. She, um, you know, that that relationship has been uh, stable for all these years, um, and it's been, uh, it, you know, it's a it's a blessing to her life that you know she's she had those friends. So um, I believe that you know she blessed her friends and her friends blessed her, and uh, it was, um, you know, it's it, it's a remarkable thing to have seen that relationship last so long. I guess I never really gave it much thought when I was growing up. Um, I just lived there and, and, and enjoyed, the, enjoyed the city, um, the, the, the town. It was very, we were very comfortable. We had no idea how comfortable we were. <laughs> we did not know. Um, but we all kind of marched through um, Palo Alto schools and uh, graduated and went to college. And we just kind of thought that's what everybody did. Um, it wasn't until much later that we realized our privilege living in Palo Alto. Of course, when my parents moved into Palo Alto, it was not quite the same as it is now. Um, I believe the house that we grew up in, in uh, on Fern Street, where uh, just down the street from Nancy, I think they might have paid $40,000 for, and it was a big stretch, so 1965. Um, and that's not what they sold it for. My parents did not buy a, buy a new construction, but it was a new neighborhood. Um, 
it was an Eichler. It was all the rage in, in that in that neighborhood. It was mm-hmm. modern, big windows. Yeah, Suzanne loved her cats. Um, since the earliest days, she loved loved the cats, and uh, there were always always cats in her in her house. Where when you know maybe in the early days when she you know left you know, after college, you know she she couldn't have one because of the apartment. But when she finally got a house and she could have her own place and have her own cats. Uh, yeah, so she, she had two or three at some, at, you know, maybe three at a time. She loved her cats. Um, and, you know, she would make a point of going through the neighborhood and kind of looking, you know, checking out all the, all the volunteer cats, I guess, I don't know, strays or whatever, but she, she enjoyed, enjoyed her cats and other people's cats. And, uh, yeah, lots of lots of cat memorabilia, cat figures, cat magnets, cat pictures, cat towels, cat blankets, cat uh, nighties, cat sweaters, cat everything. Well, there's not much to say other than Doggy's really old and pretty threadbare from love, but I think that was her maybe her baby baby stuffed toy. So a lot of a lot of loving through life. She holds on to those, you know, these things that are uh, close to her. It's important to her. Yeah, Suzanne, you know, she did uh, wa- want things in order, everything in its place and a place for everything. She, you know, liked to have things structured. Uh, you know, throughout her house, you know, she's got her areas for, uh, you know, all her books organized like a nice library by subject, by author. Um, so she's got that squared away and her videos are in one place, the records in one place, the CDs in another place, all all well organized and categorized and uh, indexed so that they could all be um, referenced and understood what we have so that was that was good and um, all her kitchen utensils and her tools and her um, sewing equipment and everything is well well organized uh, and that's just the way she was that's the way she wanted things and that's how she wanted life to be so we had we're sending this um, vintage nineteen early twentieth century uh, house with uh, with a computer and the TiVo and, and we got the sci-fi stuff over here and um, you know, the, the the classic uh, China uh, in the same room. So um, that's it, it's it's uh, somehow there's a balance that you know, she enjoyed. And, um, and just another f- fork of interest that, you know, the, the whole genre of the sci-fi is of that, uh, uh, of the, mm, what do you want to call it? The, the, the imagination, the, the, uh, the fantasy, um, all those kind of things that, uh, I'm not sure how it fits, but it's, you know, it's all part of, part of her, of what she enjoyed. And, she really enjoyed the, the sci-fi. She would go to uh, these conventions and these uh, user groups for Doctor Who, and I don't know what they talked about, but they would big, big cons to uh, talk about and dress up like her favorite Doctor Who and talk all things Who. So, uh, but you you don't share that. Particular <laughs> so so I, I enjoy my Star Trek, yes, and I enjoy my sci-fi, but I'm not, I had not quite teetered that far to um, that that level of interest. We talked about it. We we watched the shows together. We kind of you know, and that was kind of a theme running through you know our lives of you know the the Star Trek things and the Star Trek jokes and. Um, the, the who things and what she what she did with and how she, how she related the things in in the, in the who universe so it was kind of and then in, I think that ended up polluting uh, 
my younger sister Claire and um, Marlies and my my nephew Caleb. I think they've all been tainted with the Doctor Who thing. So yeah, so I have two daughters and Claire has two, uh, a son and a, and a and a daughter. So um, what would they be four? nieces and nephews and um you know she was a good good aunt you know she made sure um she yeah she was a good aunt she was uh you know always always uh taking an interest in what they were doing and asking about them and kind of following what they're what they're up to and um make you know just interested in their lives so that, that was good uh, so Suzanne um, you know, has a lot of the pieces that came from my grandparents' house, and you know they all kind of um, they kind of reflect on you know who she was, what she did, and what what she valued. Um, and I think they do kind of permeate from what what she learned because uh, so my grandfather, uh, my father's father, well he was by marriage. So my mother, they lived in Redwood City. And we would visit them pretty frequently because they were we were in Palo Alto and they were in Redwood City and it was a pretty easy drive and we shared a lot of <clears throat> a lot of the holidays and uh, birthdays and Mother's Day and Father's Day and all those kind of things so we got to see them pretty often and uh, had a lot of communication with them he, and he was from um, he immigrated from Yugoslavia and kind of started, you know, the, the typical story of starting with nothing, built a restaurant, um, and, uh, you know, he was in Detroit. They came out to Redwood City, uh, discovered that the weather was pretty good there, <laughs> sold the restaurant, moved to Redwood City, never looked back. Um, so they were, they were glad to be out of Detroit. But the whole um, Eastern European thing was something that uh, Suzanne had taken in and really became interested in and uh, kind of took that in as part of you know her her thread uh, and all the, all these things that uh, we, we uh, throughout the house kind of reflect um, her interest from that side of the family uh, on my mother's side uh, he was uh, the, the grandfather was a florist in Muskogee and uh, quite, he was pretty talented as far as his um, watercolors and etchings and photography. And he took a lot of interest in uh, in birding and uh, you know, in, as a florist also in the in the naturalist type of things. And that's kind of where that's kind of the thread of where she um, became interested in you know the naturalist side of things of uh, what you know, of plants and. and her interest in birds and she was a keen she was a keen bird like her her uh her grandfather and uh her her uncles and in, in from Muskogee so she kind of brought that in that was a piece that kind of influenced her uh and you know, other things that kind of pop in and you know who are interested in um um sewing and uh and cooking these all kind of things that maybe just got kind of influenced from um, just the the, uh, the homespun do-it-yourself uh, just the you just being able to apply your 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 craft and so I think all those things kind of started to kind of just blend in kind of uh, make the make blend to make the Suzanne that she was so you know, when we're talking about, about Claire, and so she being the youngest, and um, my father decided that we were, we wanted to go visit the family uh, cabin on the lake. It's in Minnesota. It was, you know, on the on the Beb side. They had a they had a, uh, a cabin there, and so we were going to go to the lake. Um, I can't remember what it's called, Lake Berryessa, maybe or Beltrain, Lake Beltrain. Um, so things being a little tight, my father decided we would drive to Minnesota in a VW Squareback, camping the entire way with four children and a, and a one-year-old, I think. 
So that was that was the last time we went camping. <laughs> it was quite the arrangement with the VW square back with Claire in the in the back and a big camper thing or uh, uh, luggage rack on the on the roof. Um, and it's just a I just it's just unbelievable to conceive that now. But yeah, it was but uh, we all had our jobs, you know, to go set up camp and strike camp. I can't remember what my job was, but I'm sure it involved doing dishes and fetching water. But we 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 turned we returned via um, Canada. We went through Canada through the Rockies, and uh, we saw some great things. We went through Banff and Lake Louise, and uh, just the Rockies, and then um, it was. I've never been back, and I, I treasure that. So, yes, it was a long camping trip, but I did treasure it. So, and Suzanne and Marlies, what's their relationship? How, how do they? How they were they were uh, best buds for, throughout their lives. Um, Marlies has passed as well? Yeah, she, yeah, she passed two years ago. But, uh, uh, you know, they would speak or um, communicate um, regularly I don't know if not daily but certainly weekly and they were always visiting each other and um, you know being being together and sharing things and doing 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 things so what did Marlies do? Uh, she was a pattern maker so she worked she did pretty um, she started off making patterns Cutting out patterns from raw drawings and that kind of that job evolved um, through. You know, now, now she was doing her patterns on CAD, and uh, that was a very transformative uh, job for her. But very creative, very very gifted, um, you know, with that kind of artist mind. Yeah. Suzanne did like to travel. Uh, she. Made several several trips to Europe. Uh, she made a trip through the Balkans when she was young, and then several trips to uh, to uh, Europe, to France and England. Uh, I think she enjoyed going going to England. She was many things in English. She enjoyed uh, and English tea, cookies. Everything was better English. So a little bit of a maybe Anglophile a little bit. Their, their TV's better, so there you go. Well, I, I can't remember specifically. She would typically travel by herself, but I think she did go through, like, groups. I think she went on. But she would do, she would go to, I think she went to, like, Ireland on a walking tour. Or the you know, she went to Wales and, you know, did birding kind of things. And so, yes, the, the touristy things, but also, you know, she kind of went off the beaten path to kind of see more of the more of the country, more of the... Um, local flavor, if you will. So, well, I mean, so yeah, it's true. I mean, Suzanne did teach herself computers, and uh, you know, I guess she got the books out and figured it out, uh, and you know, I probably took some classes and you know, learned what 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 it is that computers do, and that um, probably all fed into her ability to you know do get into the computer field and kind of make that that transition in her circuitous uh, career path. But it's something that, you know, she undertook, just like many of the things she did, you know, found an interest and kind of found the crack and went up the crack and, and followed where it went. And with uh, determination, and, you know, she was going to figure it out. And, that's kind of one of her traits is, you know, she, she is, she's going to do it herself. She's going to figure it out and she's going to make it happen. So that's what she did. So I guess we are much alike because I'm, I'm going to be a do-it-yourselfer. I'm going to figure out how to do it and, you know, make, make things happen. Um, um, probably, you know, I like things orderly as well and I think you know just probably that growing up in that household we it all kind of 
rubbed off on how, how we think about things and our little wanting to make systems and uh, take care of things. Uh, so personality trait, you know, I think, you know, if we were being kind of independent and just wanting to do it ourselves, um, that's probably something we we want to do ourselves. So, um, you know, I enjoy doing, you know, doing things myself and as does Suzanne. You know, she was, you know, she did the sewing and she did the, the, the knitting, but she also did a lot of work in the house herself as well. And, you know, she go down to this, you know, she, and down in the basement, you know, she's got lots of good tools, things that you would not think that she would have, but she does. You know, she's got the four-foot level, and she's got a bunch of tape, tapes and tools and hammers. And, you know, she, she did undertake some projects and, you know, learned how to do things, just like learned how to do the computer, learned how to do, how to lay down tile and paint walls and, Spackle holes, so good for her. So, you know, just I will say that, you know, doing this little tour of her house and kind of reminiscing of all the things that uh, she had just are, are um, it's, it's, a, it's a treasure that we can kind of remember her. And then all, all these things, that they're things, but they are part of Suzanne, and that's been enjoyable to kind of remember her. That's all.